Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. So today marks the launch of a series that I've been kind of thinking about for a while and I'm finally starting and it's called Pixels and Planners. Okay, I'm pretty proud of it. Anyway, so basically with this series, I am planning on combining my love of planning and memory keeping and just you know arts and crafts in general with my love of video games and if you don't know this about me I have loved video games since I was little and I am passionate about them so it's something that I just felt like you know with 20, in 2021 I really wanted to challenge myself to be more authentic and be just truly like authentically myself and not hide um you know my passions and just kind of share more things with you guys so for this series i am planning on combining my two favorite hobbies playing with paper and stickers and pens and highlighters and washi tape and playing video games so what i'm going to do here is create a planner layout today i'm going to be um, creating a layout for my nine disc um, classic happy planner size catch-all planner and I am using plain dot grid paper. I actually ordered some some more filler paper and from an Etsy shop and it hasn't come in yet because of the whole postal office fiasco. So this is just plain printer paper. Not plain. It's a little nicer than plain printer paper. Um, but it's not quite planner quality. But you know what? We're going to make it work because this is what we have. And it is dot grid if you can tell I did purchase a dot grid pattern. Um, a digital file off of Etsy. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to pick out the stickers that I want to use and kind of plan out my spread. And I want to take you guys through my planning process before I actually get to talking about games. For this first one, I just kind of want to walk you through, um, in case you're new here, my kind of planning process and how I create my layouts and choose what stickers I'm going to use and all that. So for this week, um, in my head, I really have, I'm thinking of doing a rainbow theme. Rainbows are jumping out at me for this week. And that's probably for a lot of reasons, but I'm feeling I'm in a really good mood. Um, on the day I'm filming this, it's inauguration day here in the United States. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling good. So I wanted to, you know, kind of commemorate that with rainbows. I don't know. I just Rainbows make you happy. So this is the washi I'm going to be using, and this is from Simply Gilded from their Halloween collection. This is some of the most beautiful, the camera doesn't even do it justice. This is some of the most beautiful washi I've ever seen. And I believe it was called the Metallic Candy Coated Collection for this one. So basically I'm going to be using these colors to kind of decide which stickers I want to pull. And this is a reusable sticker book. I got this at Michael's. It's from Capital Chic Designs, which I absolutely love. This cover, if you saw earlier. I mean, we go together like planners and stickers. And look at these fabulous babes on here. Like, yeah. So I had to have it. And the paper is really great for uh, placing your stickers down. So it's a great way for me to choose which stickers I'm going to use ahead of time. So I'm just going to kind of like place this washi here and have it as a reference when I'm flipping through my books and looking through to choose which uh, stickers I want to pull. So, probably speed you guys through this. All right, so now I am in my big giant <laughs> brights book and I'm really trying to find stickers that aren't necessarily just straight rainbow. Like because because I don't have like a red in here, it, I just feel like it kind of throws it off. So I'm going to start here on the right and just look like something like this would work. Um, actually, that's pretty. Yeah, I like that. And the pink, ooh. I'm really trying to use my stickers. Like I just, I have all these books that I've had for 
forever and I just want to use them and stop like just getting new stuff and forgetting about what I already own, you know? I think I want to use this color too because it kind of, yeah, it kind of goes with that purple. I love banner stickers. I just think they're so cute. Maybe a green. So these do have gold accents. So I'm thinking we're going to have to do gold accents, which is fine. Oh, or if I don't want to do gold, I didn't realize the second page was here. So I'm going to pull a few of these just in case I decide I'm not in a gold mood. Nope. Run away washi. And it's gone. Ooh. I kind of want to do gold, I think, because this is like, it's yellow, but it's sort of gold. I feel like it goes really well. So see, like, I'm trying to avoid, like, this, this kind of rainbow because it has so much of that, like, red, like, the, you know, this is more like pastel and this is very bright. Um, I mean, it is the Brights book, but, you know, there's stickers in here that, that go a little better with this. So I'm going to avoid these for now. Work hard and be nice to people is always a good quote. Pretty. This is my year. Yeah, I said that last year, so we're not going to say that. Don't want to jinx it. Okay, so now we finally have all of our stickers, or at least most of them, picked out for the layout. So this is the kind of color scheme we're going with. Like I said, very like pastel rainbow, and then we're, you know, we got to have some spooky in there. So we're going to have some bats. And so I'm just going to set this to the side. And now I'm going to briefly show you how I create my layouts. So obviously with a clean slate like this, you can do whatever you want for your planner layout. Um, and I've found that it's just been a really great way for me to change up what I'm doing. So depending on my mood, some weeks I like vertical layouts, other weeks I like horizontal, and other weeks I like something just completely off the wall. This week, I've really been vibing with vertical lately, and I think I want to kind of stick with that for now, just because that's what I've been really liking. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I just use my ruler, and this week I want to use my Bold Point Sharpie S-Gel. For some reason, I know I have like four of these, but I can only find the medium points. I have like seriously like 10 medium point ones, and this one Bold Point one. But I've been feeling this Bold Point lately, so that's what I'm going to go with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I like to start on Monday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm going to do vertical and I'm going to just draw the boxes. And some weeks I like to make the boxes very squared off and I'll use the ruler and just like draw like very like square defined lines. And other weeks I like it to look, look a little more like doodly, if that makes sense, like um, just kind of, you know, freehand it. And I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but to get started, I just like to measure across the page. And this dot grid is a little different than what I used last time. So I have to make sure to not like rely on counting the dots because it definitely changes, um, you know, depending on which paper you're using. And so since I know I need to use three boxes, I think what I'm going to do here, I want to start here. Okay, I changed my mind. Um, I do want to use my my old paper. Uh, that printer paper is just a little too thin for me, and I, I, I'm just not, yeah, I want to go with this. And plus, I think for once, um, normally this has been bothering me, but for once, I think these blue dots and the blue are actually going to go really well with this kind of rainbow theme. So we might as well just roll with it. Um, and this paper's much better than that other paper. So we're gonna go with this and we're going to, I believe it's 10 dots, right? All right, so now I've got everything marked off. And I think what I wanna do for this week is I wanna do rounded corners, but I want the edges to be very clean. So I'm going to just kind of draw a rounded corner here and here. 
So I'm just gonna draw the rounded corners and then I'm gonna use my ruler to really just make sure the lines are pretty clean. Uh, last week I did more of like a doodle um, where the lines were a little, you know, more like unclean and I thought that was really cute, but this week I think we'll go with the clean lines. Make sure the ruler is cleaned off. Oh, that Sharpie edge gel is so smooth, y'all. Mm. I don't know why I blow on it as if it like smears because it doesn't. Uh, make sure you rub off your ruler though because your ink can get on a ruler depending on you know what material your ruler is. Mine's just cheap, cheapo Target plastic ruler and it can come off on your paper and you don't want that. All right, so I am going to just continue that process until all the boxes are done, and then we'll be back for the actual plan with me, and we will begin our first Pixels and Planners video. All right, so now our layout is created, and it's time to start planning. So now begins the actual meat and potatoes of the video. Um, for the future, I will not be going through that whole beginning process of how I choose my stickers and draw my layout, but I wanted to show you in case you're new here um, and you haven't seen any of my past videos on how I do it. And, you know, if you're interested, um, I have other videos on like how my planning style changed. I used to use exclusively Happy Planner and, you know, I had like a planner and I didn't do this whole draw your own layout thing. A lot changed in 2020, so... I have plenty of videos on that. I will link um, some in the description box if you are interested. But now we are going to get into it. And so I'm going to start planning. And while I plan, we're going to talk about video games. And for the first video, I thought, you know, this is something I need to get off my chest. And something I've been thinking about whew, for a while. And something I never came out and really talked about online because at the time, I couldn't. Uh, it was just too much. Today we're going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 2. And this will be full of spoilers. So if you care about playing The Last of Us Part 2 and seeing how the story pans out and you have not played it, please don't watch this. Um, I'll put a timestamp so you can skip to uh, a point where the layout's completed and you can see kind of what we created. But if you don't even know what The Last of Us Part 2 is and you're just here for planners or if you've played the game, uh, I encourage you to stick around because I want to talk about this. Whew. Um, okay, where do I begin? So The Last of Us, the original game, is one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game of all time. I was so excited. Well, let me let me backtrack. When the game was first announced and I saw that Naughty Dog's new IP was going to be a zombie game, I was kind of like, oh man, like I was kind of bummed out because I just was kind of over zombies and I thought, you know, really? Like they couldn't do something different? You know, we're all kind of like zombied out, like I'm over it. And then, you know, the more that came out about it, the more I saw, I was like, okay, this is more than just a zombie game. This is, this is different. And so, you know, the hype started to really grow. Um, you know, I was a huge, huge fan of the Uncharted series. Still am. Not was. I am a huge fan of the Uncharted series. And so I was really excited for whatever Naughty Dog was working on. Um, and so the hype started growing. I started to become really, really excited about the game and then fast forward you know I ended up just becoming a little obsessed with the game and just absolutely adoring it and it quickly became like I said one of my favorite if not my favorite uh, game of all time and so obviously I was looking forward to part two and when part two was first announced I, I screamed. I was jumping up and down. I was so excited. And then I tried, you know, I watched the reveal trailer. And I tried to not watch any more trailers. Because with games that I really care about, I don't watch the trailers. I want to go in as blind as humanly possible. Um, I really don't want to know a lot beforehand. You know, if that can be helped. I really, like, I don't want to know anything about the plot. 
And so I didn't watch any of the trailers. And if you are active in this community, you already know, uh, in the gaming community, not the player community, if you're in both like me, hi. So 2020 was uh, quite the year, wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, so on top of being an already just terrible year overall, you know, I was really looking forward to this game. I've been looking forward to it for so long. I was so excited. Well, and then the leaks happened. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're lucky. But if you do, the leaks uh, refer to there were some really bad uh, leaks surrounding The Last of Us Part Two that came out before the game's uh, release last June. And unfortunately, I was on Twitter and I literally opened Twitter. I mean, just opened Twitter, okay? And I saw a screenshot. Again, spoilers incoming, okay? I'm just, just final warning. I'm about to spoil the story of Last of Us Part Two. I opened Twitter and the screenshot I saw was Joel dead on the floor. Or at least he appeared to be dead. He was covered in blood and he was on the floor. And that's what I saw. And my heart sank. And so obviously with me being so excited for the game, seeing that, I mean, it, it broke my heart. I was mad. Um, I was really upset, but then I was really angry that someone felt the need to share that. So just... Just right there on Twitter. I wasn't looking for it. I just opened Twitter and there it was. And I was just so upset. And obviously I didn't have any context. I didn't know was Joel actually dead at this point. I didn't know that. I didn't know really anything. Um, and oh, and then I, the curi my curiosity got the better of me and I clicked on the thread. I was really just in shock. I clicked on the thread, you know, of the person who, who posted this, the, the asshole who posted this. And right below the original tweet was another tweet. And it was another picture, another screenshot from the game. And it was Ellie standing at the graveside of Joel Miller. And that's when I obviously knew, oh, Joel's dead. And then I was really, really, really upset. Cause then I was like, okay, now I officially know that Joel dies and he dies in a violent way. So I was mad. Um, <laughs> I was very mad. And at that point I closed Twitter and then you know, social media was blowing up. The internet was blowing up because of these leaks. I mean, people were going just batshit crazy over the fact that this game that has been so highly anticipated, people, you know, we were so close to the launch. And, you know, in this year that has just been a disaster all around in a pandemic, you know, we've been looking forward to this game to give us, you know, something to distract us and entertain us and now the story has seemingly been ruined for us and that's how I felt I was like well the story's been ruined there's no point in even playing the game and then you know more and more came out about the story and the direction it was headed and that you know that you were going to play as the person who killed Joel and all this stuff and I was letting all these people on YouTube and on and on Twitter and just all over, I was letting them start to influence my opinion of the game before I even played it. And I was thinking, you know, I don't even want to play this game. It was just so negative and, and the vitriol online. It was just, it was disgusting. Just the people saying things like, and saying, you know, how woke Neil Druckmann is and how, um, you know, <laughs> get woke go broke and and all this just horrible stuff and people 
the transphobia people saying, you know, you play as this trans character and all this. And I was just so disgusted at even, like, I didn't even want to hear about it anymore. And by the time the game actually came out, I was feel I was very upset. I was feeling some type of way because, you know, part of me still really wanted to play the game, obviously, and experience it for myself. And then the other part of me just said, you know what? You already know Joel dies and all the negativity surrounding this game. Yeah, you don't even want to go there right now. And so I wasn't going to buy the game, but my husband, who loves me so much, went and picked up the collector's edition that I had pre-ordered months prior. And he, because he went online, he's not a huge fan of The Last of Us. He can kind of take it or leave it. He's more of an Uncharted guy. And he said, you know, he didn't care if the story was spoiled for him. So he went online and looked up the actual story, the actual ending, and saw it. And he said, you're going to like it. I picked the game up for you. You're going to like it. And uh, thank God for him. Um, and so he picked it up for me and I started playing it. And over the course of three days, um, for a total of 24 hours and 24 minutes was my run time by the time uh, the credits rolled. I played and completed The Last of Us Part Two, and I saw the story play out the way that it was intended. Without, you know, I really tried to go into it and say, okay, forget about what you saw. You know, it's really hard to do that, but forget about what you saw. Forget that you know Joel's dead. Forget everything you've heard. Just, just go in and just play the game. And I tried to do that. It was hard, but I tried to do that. And let me tell you, I'm so glad I played the game. I went into this game thinking that the end was going to be that Joel died. That you were going to play through the entire game and then you were going to get to the end and Joel was going to die and it was going to be this like heartbreaking thing. Meanwhile, what actually happens is <laughs> Joel dies within the first like, is it the first? I want to say it felt like the first hour realistically probably the first two hours I mean he he dies early this is a 24 hour about it took me 24 hours it you know it depends on how you play and whatever I'm sure there's people who beat it in a much shorter amount of time and other people it may have taken longer just depends on how you play so when I got to that part because I had seen the screenshot you know I had seen the screenshot on Twitter so I kind of knew like what the setting looked like where he died and that scene happened. That scene came up and I said, no, 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 no. There's, there's no way. He's not going to die right now. We're like, I just started the game. He's not going to die right now. And then it happened. And let me tell you, when I think about that scene, I, I get very emotional. <laughs> That's surprising, right? I'm, I'm an emotional person. I'm a Pisces. I can't help it. That scene was incredibly difficult to watch. And I understand why they did it the way that they did it because they wanted you to feel exactly what Ellie felt and it worked. Um, I felt at that point in the game, uh, really fucking pissed, really angry. I wanted to strangle Abby with my bare hands and I felt, I felt like I had PTSD from, from seeing this scene. And I just felt like disgusted. And that's how they wanted you to feel. And that's a big criticism that a lot of people have said of the game, which I can I can understand this point. This unlike all the bullshit of people saying, you know, oh trans and all the, the bullshit. One legitimate thing that I that I read someone had posted that I could empathize with and say, Oh, you know, I understand your point of view there. They said that what they didn't like about The Last of Us Part 2 was that it's constantly telling you how to feel. At that point, it's telling you to be angry because it wants you to be angry. The story is leading you in, in such a way that, you know, it kind of makes you feel certain things at different points in the story. I'm okay with that. 
I understand how some people don't like that, especially with the first game being so different, where it doesn't really tell you how to feel. It's very ambiguous. And like the ending is so like, you don't really know how to feel throughout the whole thing. Um, so I, I can kind of understand people saying that, you know, throughout the course of playing the game, you're kind of forced to feel a certain way. They want you to feel angry at this part and sad at this part and, you know, all these different things. And I get that. I can, I can respect that point. Um, however, it didn't bother me. So at that point in the story, you know, this woman, this really muscular woman with a golf club, who I don't really know, I barely know at this point, has murdered the person I played as for hundreds of hours, the amount of times I replayed The Last of Us Part 1. And I was upset. Obviously, I was very upset over it. And so, again, at that point in the story, I wanted to, um, I wanted to kill Abby. As Ellie, I wanted to go after Abby and kill her. And that's how they want you to feel at that point. And I kept playing the game and, oh man, um, a lot happens in the game. Throughout the game, and I wish, I wish so badly I journaled while playing the game because throughout the game, uh, your emotions change pretty, uh, at, at least mine did. And I think this was the intention um, of the developers and the writers. Your emotions change very drastically and your opinions on characters will change very dramatically. Um, so, you know, obviously I start the game, hate Abby, want her to die, want to kill her. I'm playing throughout the game and, you know, Abby and all of her friends, Owen and Mel and Manny, these people, I hated all of them. I wanted them all to die because they hated and murdered the man who I played as throughout the first game. And and I'm not even a huge, like, Joel fanatic. I mean, I love Joel. But I remember the first time I beat the first one. And I was pretty angry at Joel. I was kind of of the opinion that, like, what he did was... I understood why he did it, but it was kind of fucked up. And um, I... I just really wasn't really sure how to feel about Joel at that point. So I've, I've never been like a, you know, Joel fangirl. Um, it was really about, obviously, it was about Joel and Ellie together is what made the story so good. Um, and that's another reason that people, you know, people don't like the deceptive tactics that they use in the trailer. Which, again, I was unaware of because I don't watch trailers for games I really care about. So I didn't know about this trailer. The trailer where they basically made a fake trailer and they inserted Joel in a scene that's like way later in the game um, so that you wouldn't know that Joel was going to be dead and uh, who's actually in that scene is Jesse. And so uh, people really didn't like that. Now for me it wasn't like this shocking moment because again I hadn't seen the trailers. So just another reason not to watch trailers in my opinion. Um, and you know people were so mad that they did that and I don't really, they're like, oh, that's deceptive marketing and you can't do that. And I, I understand that point of view, but also, I mean, Hollywood does it all the time. I mean, they're just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, they're, they're trying, yeah, they're trying to throw you off, but they want to make sure that you are surprised when it gets to that point. So, I mean, I, you know, I understand, um, but it didn't, obviously. I didn't even know that it was a thing because I hadn't watched trailers. And so for me, um, you know, playing through the game and getting to the end. Um, and this is where I want to talk about how I feel about the story overall, um, about the direction that they took and about Ellie and Abby's actions and just how I feel about them. So first of all, I will admit that when I first started playing the game, I was one of those people, I had the thought and I made the comment to myself, how the hell would Abby be so muscular in this universe where people are just trying to survive? Like, how would she have enough food to sustain this muscle? And, you know, people would say, 
you wouldn't bat an eye at a male character. Well, yes, I would. You don't see big, giant, buff male characters in this universe, in the post-apocalyptic world. Bill was a big guy, but he wasn't muscular. He was just a big fat dude. Um, I mean, name like one giant muscular dude in the Last of Us universe, because I can't think of one. Um, yes, of course, the, you know, the, the Fireflies, like, they're people who are, you know, toned, but not big and buff. Like, the kind of muscle that Abby has, or had, um, was clearly, like, she had to eat a lot of protein to sustain this. Um, and that was a big issue for a lot of people. And it, I will say it was something that, that was bothering me when I first met Abby and saw her and, and kind of thought, like, how, how in the world is she this like built in this universe like it was it was really kind of bugging me um just because I felt like it kind of like it wasn't I know this is a video game we're talking about but it like wasn't realistic um it just didn't like make sense but you know and I'm sitting here thinking like are they gonna address the elephant in the room like are they going to uh are they gonna say something about Abby's muscle and then you know, they show that the the W the WLF, the Wolf <laughs> uh base, that, you know, there's a big gym and they do have access to food, and I still don't think she would have had enough food to sustain that kind of muscle, but um they they did at least explain it, and then through showing flashbacks of her and seeing how the muscle built up over time, it made sense in the context of the story in that Abby was basically trying to turn herself into a human machine to take down Joel, who was the person who murdered her father. And so, uh, the doctor at the end of the first game, in case you didn't know. So, that was Abby's father, was the doctor at the end of the first game. So, that's why she became this tank. And I respect that. I, I think that was a, that was pretty cool. Pretty cool direction to, to take. Um, definitely, you know, something that's unexpected and I do think it's easy to jump on the, you know, whenever anybody says anything to say, oh, you're, you're sexist. And, no, no, no. I would question that if it were a male that was big and huge. Um, cause she, I mean, she was the only person who was that muscular and big and it just really caught me off guard. I think they maybe went a little too far with it, but I digress. So let's kind of fast forward ahead a little bit here to the end of the game. You know, I'm not going to go through. I'm just, these are just my thoughts. Um, just about the game. This isn't a review. This isn't, yeah. So when the credits rolled, um, my initial reaction. So like I said before, my initial reaction at the end of the last of us part one, when I got to the credits was I was, I was kind of mad. I was kind of mad at Joel, um, for doing, what he did I thought it was kind of fucked up um that was my like gut reaction was you know he he kind of like like I understood why he did what he did and couldn't really blame him but I still thought that was really fucked up what he did because Ellie was potentially the cure for this virus and you know that's a whole, that's a whole other thing I could go down a rabbit hole. But, um, at the end of part two, my initial gut reaction and my feeling was, uh, satisfaction. I was really happy with the ending of the game and where the story ended up going. And I felt, um... I did feel very conflicted because at that point I was thinking to myself like, wow, I actually, I kind of like Abby. And it was just like blowing my mind. I was like, Cassie, you can't like Abby. She murdered Joel. And again, that's how they want you to feel. They want you the, you know, by the end of the game, they want you to at least be able to empathize with Abby. And um, at that point, at the end, I was like, you know, I, I kind of like her. And it was like blowing my mind. I was like, how, how is this possible that I started this game 
hating this woman, wanting her dead. She killed Joel. And now I'm sitting here like, yeah, you know, she's not that bad. And that right there just really speaks to the storytelling and just how this game was executed. Like it, I, I just, I have never had a game make me feel the way that game made me feel. It was an emotional roller coaster. And what I will say that I think that in addition to the leaks, obviously, I think what really hurt The Last of Us Part Two because I think it's pretty obvious that that game didn't sell um, as much as they probably would have liked. I think that um, it still sold well, but I don't think it sold nearly what they expected just because I, I saw it going on sale very like frequently not long after it came out and just all the negativity online, I think, really affected it. The leaks, I, I do think, hurt them. Because there are people who just saw that Joel died and were like, fuck that game, I'm not playing it. And, uh, um, you know, that's unfortunate. And there's still a lot of people out there who are avid, like, haters of Last of Us Part Two. Hate it. And there are people who legitimately have, like, legitimate criticisms of the game and issues with it. And they're allowed to have those opinions, but unfortunately, I feel like those people just get shot down and lumped in with the mass group of, like, haters. And when I say that, I mean people who are like, oh, Abby's trans, you know, <laughs> like, uh, Manny is a Neil Druckmann clone and all this, and it, come on. Um, you, you can't give those people a time of day. Those people aren't. But there are people who just don't like the story. And they're allowed to not like the story. That's the beauty of opinions. Um, and so... So like I said, my thoughts at the end. Gut reaction was... You know, wow, that was... That was excellent. That was... That was amazing. Like, that made me feel some type of way. Like, I, I really was just kind of taken aback and I felt like I just needed to, like, lie down and think about it <laughs> for a long period of time. Like, it really, it was a lot. It, you know, weighed heavy on my heart and I, I do think that something that really hurt The Last of Us Part Two, other than the leaks, was the fact that this game came out in 2020 this game that is by nature of its like existence just so dark the themes are so dark um the imagery is very dark and it's it's a lot it it can be a lot to uh to process and i think with you know obviously no one knew that a pandemic was coming uh, when that game <laughs> was first, you know, being made and when they decided, you know, about when it was going to come out. And uh, I think the pandemic hurt that game in that there were people and I was almost one of them. And I'm a die hard like Naughty Dog Last of Us fan. Um, there were people who were just like, this game is just too dark for me right now. Like, I, with everything going on, I can't deal with this right now. And I respect and completely understand that. And like I said, I was almost that person. I was almost in that boat where it was, like, too much. Where I was like, oh my god, like, this is too much. This is too dark um, for me right now where I am so depressed. You know, Trump is president. There's all this racial injustice. And it came out in June. June was an awful month awful um and so you know on top of the pandemic and the racial injustice and everything going on and people are dying and stuff is just just <laughs> really like shitty and then here comes this game that's like hey we're gonna murder your fa one of your favorite characters in front of your eyes in this like visceral really graphic way and it was just too much for some people and i get that totally respect that and totally understand how that would be too much. I think it being, you know, in the pan during the pandemic, um, I do think that hurt it. And so, you know, obviously after um, completing the game, 
you know, I went down the rabbit hole. Like then I was able to go online and like see what people were saying and see how people felt and like talk to other people about it. Cause I was just like, I, I felt like I needed to talk to somebody about it and see how they felt because I was just conflicted in so many ways. I wasn't sure how to feel. Cause like I said, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, I kind of like Abby, but I also still don't like her. I'm not sure. I don't know, you know, what happened? Like, did, you know, where's Ellie going? You know, what's, I just had all these thoughts and, um, I had a few close friends I was able to talk to and, you know, kind of bounce like thoughts off of and everything. And it, uh, it was good good to talk about it because it was a very like heavy experience it was it was heavy it was it was kind of hard um to deal with honestly and like i said particularly in um you know during this pandemic that you know has everyone just like uh struggling to survive honestly <laughs> um Kind of the last thing that a lot of people wanted was to play this, like, super dark, depressing game. And that is the reason that I didn't jump right back in for a second playthrough like I typically would do. Um, you know, as soon as I beat Last of Us, the, you know, the, first, the original one, I just immediately went back in and started again. Because I just love the game so much. Um, with part two, I was like, okay, I need a break. <laughs> like, I... I need some time away because that was a lot. Um, it's just, it was a lot. Okay, so the big question here. Do I think that Ellie was justified in her actions? And do I think that Abby was justified in her, in her actions? Uh, yes. And do I think that Joel... Uh, you know, people, people posting, people were posting online, you know, uh, Joel deserved better. And, you know, it, it wasn't that Joel died. It was the way he died. And it was, you know, how it just happened so quickly. And then it was, it was just over and it was so violent. And, you know, how could they do that? And blah, blah, blah. And that's the point. The point is this world that you're, inhabiting as you're playing this game is a world where shit's not fair it, it's not fair and it sucks and everyone is just trying to survive and people don't get the luxury of you know dying gracefully people are murdered people murder each other people are just trying to survive and so for Joel to go out in the way that he did made perfect sense in that universe and honestly, he did deserve it. And that, I love Joel. But put yourself in Abby's shoes where you're Abby, you're a kid, and this dude comes in and murders your father, who's a doctor. Murders him just because he's trying to, and yes, there's this argument, you know, yeah, the doctor was, you know, going to kill Ellie, but it was for the good of mankind um, that, you know, they were going to finally have the cure to this, to this uh, virus. And, you know, that it was kind of a, you know, it was for the greater good of, of everyone and that what Joel did was super selfish. And yeah, it was super selfish, but just like Tommy said at the beginning of part two. You know, Joel, that, that's a lot. I love what, I love the way he said that. That's a lot. Because that's how I felt. Um, you know, it, it was a lot. However, you know, Tommy said, I don't blame you. I would have, he said, I think he said, I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing or something like that. And that's how I feel. I, I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing. If that was, you know someone I loved and really cared about and saw basically as a daughter. He had already, 
you know, Joel had already lost a daughter and to lose Ellie would have just been unbearable and he wouldn't have had anything to keep fighting for. And so, yes, what he did was selfish. Yeah, it was. But would you have, you know, would you have done anything different? Because if Joel, in Joel's eyes, it was like, okay, so I'm about to lose another daughter. And I lose her, and then what do I have? I've lost Tess. I've lost everyone. Everyone's dead. And what do I have to live for? Like, that's that's it. There's no reason for Joel to keep living if Ellie dies. And that's why I don't blame him for what he did. But in Abby's eyes, Joel is just a murderer. Just in the way that we see Abby and that, you know, how she's a murderer and she, she killed Joel and it was terrible and all this. You know, Abby saw Joel as the person who murdered her father and took away her father, who she obviously loved and I can't blame her I can't blame her for what she did I really can't um I just wish that she had uh dealt with it in a different way um I think that Abby started the whole cycle of revenge she she started that um and, you know, I do think it, it really bummed me out when, when Ellie, and I again, I think this is how they want you to feel. When Ellie, you know, was there with Dina and she said, I have to go, I have to finish it. And she left her perfect life with Dina and JJ and went after Abby to kill her. And I didn't want her to go. I was like, Ellie, no, let it, no, let it go. But Ellie was experiencing this intense PTSD from seeing Joel get murdered. Um, and I, I get that. I get that. But man, at that point, it's like as much as I hate what Abby did, I do understand why she did it. And I don't want Ellie to continue this. There's killing, killing Abby is not going to take away your PTSD and it's not going to bring Joel back. And I wish that Abby had realized that killing Joel was not going to bring her father back. So Abby really is the one who started the whole thing. And that's why I struggle to empathize with Abby a little bit more than I do with Ellie. However, by the end, I was really kind of mad at Ellie for, for going after Abby, like continuing like after everything. Now you got this perfect life. Let it go, man. Let it go. Don't do it. It's not going to help. And I was so glad that Abby lived at the end. And that, that Ellie, you know, so many people, I saw online so many people criticizing. Um, oh, will this fit here? That's not going to fit. That's going to look stupid. So many people criticized the ending of the game. And I'm just going to say what I saw people saying online. I saw people online saying, you know, really like Ellie has come this far and, and after everything she's been through and she left Dina and now her life is ruined. Um... You know, she left Dina and did all this to go after Abby and then she's not even going to kill her? Like, what was the point? You know, why would she... Why would she do that? And she saw that flashback of Joel and, you know, wouldn't that make her uh, want to kill her even more? Because cause Abby took Joel away and took away her chance of, of reconnecting with Joel and, and forgiving him? No. And it's so clear to me, but the point of that... And what's so powerful about that is that they showed that flashback of Joel on the porch to remind Ellie that Joel would not want her to do this. Because they're talking about forgiveness. And that's the whole point. Ellie needs to forgive Abby and let go. And that's why I loved that ending so much. And, you know, people that 
that say, you know, oh, I really wish that, that Ellie had killed Abby. I, I'm really glad she didn't. I would have been very upset if she did. Uh, it just, it, and I, I think that's, you know, that also ties in with like people who believe in the death penalty versus people who don't. Um, I'm of the belief that killing someone doesn't, you know, bring the other person back. And I just don't think it's, I don't think it, uh, I think that's the easy way out. But that's a whole other, that's a whole other topic. So, yeah, those are some of, just some of my thoughts about The Last of Us Part Two, Um, and I definitely, uh, I, I definitely have had a lot of thoughts about this game, and they have changed, my opinions have changed, and, um, it's a game that, for better or worse, if you love it or you hate it, uh, it definitely started a conversation and I think was uh unforgettable whether you think that it you know it was a bad thing that you know there are people who are like I just like to pretend that the game didn't happen I just like to um you know just just remember how much I love the first game and and not even think about the second game and how Joel died and all this and you know that's it's fine. It's your opinion. You don't have to like it. And I welcome any um, civil discussion <laughs> in the comments. You know, unfortunately, some people can't um, can't talk about the game without being just nasty, um, and I will not tolerate that. But if you would like to have a civil discussion in the comments, I welcome it. I love these little freebies from the honeybee shop. I printed out a crap ton of them as little stickers. And they're just, oh, they're so cute. This is my favorite thing about getting my Cricut is that I can print these freebies now. Thanks, Mom. I like these words. Like, it's a great way to... Uh, start off your week you know you look you're like inspire let me remember to inspire someone okay i think i'm finally done i gotta leave myself some room to write so what i do is you know now i have these extra ones uh kind of sitting here on the page and i'll go in after you know once i've done like my after the pen and i'll put these arrows in once i write to like point to things and um I'll, you know, kind of insert some of these after I've actually planned and, you know, written on this bread. Um, and I won't end up using them all. And sometimes I just leave, leave the leftovers. And throughout the week, sometimes I'll kind of pop some in depending on how the week goes and if I have a little extra room. But I love how this came out. I think it's super cute. Um, I'm just having some issues with this sticker because this is my old sticker paper that's not the best and it doesn't want to stick onto um on top of this washi so i think i might just use my glue stick sometimes a trusty glue stick can save the day hey speaking of last was part two and there she is you completed for the pen layout. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It's definitely something different. Um, like I said, in 2021, I really want to be authentic and and just share more and really talk about the things that mean a lot to me. And I feel like games mean so much to me that it's weird to not share it with anyone. <laughs> so I just, you know, I thought I'd talk with you guys. And I know that a lot of my planner friends um also love video games so i hope that you guys enjoy please let me know um give this video a thumbs up if you did like i said i welcome uh civil discourse in the comments if you would like to talk about the game i am uh 
always open to talking about The Last of Us and games in general, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Pixels and Planners. I will be back with many more. I've got many more topics planned where I just want to talk about video games and uh, kind of start a conversation with you guys about various games and gaming news and just current goings on in the industry while creating a planner layout. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you have not. And I'll see you next time. Bye!